So by way of disclosures, we're going to talk about uh, selection of heart valves. I have no financial interest in, in heart valve substitutes. It, it, is an, it is an area, though, that I think that it uh, deserves a quote. And the, the quote that I like when I talk to people about heart valves, especially surgeons, is Mark Twain. It said, it, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so. So if you hold that thought for the next 15 minutes, we'll talk about artificial heart valves. <clears throat> Two cases. The first case is a 66-year-old hospital administrator, uh, minimally symptomatic, in fact, had no symptoms before he was told he had heart disease, and now he occasionally gets a little shortness of breath, but really minimally symptomatic wants to be active in retirement. So he's just retired and he has severe aortic stenosis, critical by everyone's measurement, valve area of 0.7, um, minimal symptoms. And tell me what you would do with this patient. Taver, he's low risk, surgical aortic valve replacement with a bioprosthesis, surgical aortic valve replacement with a mechanical prosthesis, and anticoagulation or other. So let's have your vote. Are we going to have a vote? Doesn't look like it's working there. All right, Taver got about a third, and surgical aortic valve replacement got 42%. Uh, all right, let's take another patient. This is a 22-year-old uh, man with rheumatic heart disease who had staph aureus endocarditis, developed severe aortic regurgitation, had mild mitral valve disease at that time. His infection was controlled with antibiotics but had residual heart failure, clearly needed an operation. So what would you do here? Taver, his infection is controlled. Surgical aortic valve replacement with a bioprosthesis, a mechanical valve, a ROS procedure, a homograft. So pick one of those, and then we'll, have, we'll discuss selection of heart valves. How would you manage this patient in your practice? All right. Taver, Saver with a bioprosthesis, so mechanical prosthesis and anticoagulation. Ross procedure didn't get very many votes. All right, well, let's start. Well, first of all, we're talking about valve selection, and in, in, we're in the Taver era, and there is clearly increasing popularity for bioprostheses amongst physicians and surgeons, or physicians and cardiologists. It's also true that patients don't want to take, but probably misunderstand, warfarin and what that means for their life. We're also influenced by industry, which suggests that there's better durability of the third generation bioprosthesis. And then I think, without saying it out loud, people have accepted that it's not, the durability of a bioprosthesis is really not an issue anymore because now we can do valve and valve. So why, why a bioprosthesis? Let's talk about the potential advantages of, of this. Well, I've heard cardiologists tell me that they prefer bioprostheses for their patients because of the reduced risk of thromboembolism and so forth versus a mechanical valve. Is that true, false, or is, are you uncertain? Let's vote on that one really quick. Get a vote. Is there a lower risk of thromboembolism with a bioprosthesis than a mechanical valve? Yes, well, we have some work to do. Um, it turns out that every study that has looked at risk of thromboembolism, no matter how you define it, whether it's stroke, peripheral embolism, or any kind of thromboembolism, shows that there's absolutely no difference in the risk of thromboembolism with a bioprosthesis and an anticoagulated mechanical valve. I'll show you just one study because we're, we're short of time here, but this is a recent study from New York State which looks at cumulative risk of stroke among patients who are matched and have a bioprosthesis and a mechanical valve. So, nope. 
What about avoiding anticoagulation? Well, that's, that's a very good reason to have a bioprosthesis, especially for an elderly patient or someone who uh, is at risk for falling or injuring themselves. Um, so with a bioprosthesis, you avoid the risk of anticoagulation. Is that true? Is it false? Or are you uncertain? Let's vote quickly. Well, we have some work to do. Uh, Two-thirds of the people in, in the audience say that you avoid anticoagulation with cumin, which is, I guess, technically true. You don't, you don't need to. But if you follow patients who have uh, bioprostheses and you follow patients who have mechanical valves, you'll have bleeding complications. Now, you, you don't have to use coumadin or an anticoagulant with a bioprosthesis for the bioprosthesis itself, but patients need coumadin for other reasons. And if you look at the cumulative risk of a bleeding episode, it's about 1% per year in a mechanical valve that's anticoagulated. But it's not a difference between 1% per year and zero. It's a difference between 1% per year and 0.5% per year. In other words, it, it's true that you reduce the risk of bleeding complications because you don't have as many patients on Coumadin, but you don't eliminate bleeding complications by using a bioprosthesis. And that's shown here. This, these are older studies, but you have to have an older study if you want a 15-year follow-up. But this looks at the 15-year follow-up of patients with, with bioprostheses in the aortic and mitral positions. And by five years after surgery, 16% of patients with aortic valves, 36% of patients with mitral bioprostheses are taking Coumadin. And by 15 years, over half of the patients with <coughs> mitral valves are taking Coumadin, and a third of the patients with uh, aortic valves are taking Coumadin. And that's because you can have, you can have thrombus on, on uh, tissue valves, and we may hear more about this later. But the point is, it doesn't matter whether it's a tissue valve that, that surgeons put in or a tissue valve that an interventional cardiologist puts in, you can have thrombus formation on tissue valves. Now, the question is, if you need Coumadin uh, early after, after <coughs> uh, putting in a bioprosthesis, how long do you need it? And this is an interesting study from Denmark, which showed that up to 180 days, which is six months, there was an advantage in anticoagulating patients with aortic bioprostheses. You had a reduced risk of thromboembolism. So not only is it probably important to use uh, Coumadin for three months after surgery, it's possible that that should be extended up to six months. Now, there's debate amongst that amongst surgeons, but at least the evidence is out there. And in fact, if they looked at cardiovascular deaths after aortic valve replacement in, bio, in patients with a bioprosthesis with and without warfarin, a much higher risk of a, of a cardiovascular death if you don't use Coumadin during the first six months and there's also an increased risk during the second three months. So, the, so it looks like you should, if you use a bioprosthesis, you should anticoagulate patients for at least three and probably six months. The way they calculated this, they said, but <clears throat> with 90 to, between 90 to 180 days after surgery, for every 23 patients not treated with warfarin, one died from a cardiovascular cause. So you really don't avoid anticoagulation with Coumadin. You avoid long-term anticoagulation with Coumadin in many patients. So I'd call that sort of. Let's take another advantage. Well, it, we, we are told now that our current bioprostheses last longer than the older ones. And now the, for the aortic position, we use pericardial valves. In, in the past, there was the, the Hancock valve that was a, a porcine bioprosthesis. And the message from industry is that these valves last longer. And again, it doesn't matter if they don't last longer because you can just do TAVR. So let's examine those issues. Is there better durability with the newer designs? You probably know which way this is going, don't you? Um, we won't vote on it, but I think about how you would, how you would take that. Well, it turns out that even pericardial valves can fail this is a torn cusp. You see, this is the attachment of the cusp that ought to be up here. And this cusp has torn away from the post. Uh, 
and now you have central regurgitation. This is a patient who two years after a, a mitral valve replacement had a calcification of the valve and panis formation. So tissue valves can fail early. And if we tell a patient that the longevity of a tissue valve is pick a number, 12 years, well, that's an average. That means some of them are failing at eight and some of them are failing at, at 20. And when we look at our experience with what's called, with, with porcine and pericardial valves, which is essentially a, a, the pericardial or the more recent generation, the third generation valves versus porcine valves, there's really no difference in survival of the patient. In fact, the, 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 the curves, the survival curves of patients are superimposable up to 16 years. Now it turns out there's a little difference but the difference is in favor of the porcine valve, the older valve, not the newer valve. So there's not a lot of evidence that there's improved durability with a pericardial valve, whether, you, whether a surgeon puts it in or an interventional cardiologist puts it in compared to a porcine valve. Now what about the business, it doesn't matter if it fails because you can just put in a valve inside a valve. And these are data from Mayo Clinic where we looked at our, our or surgeons and cardiologists looked at the outcome of TAVR or surgical aortic valve replacement for a failing bioprosthesis. And in the TAVR group, so they had valves that failed, had a TAVR, 44% had patient prosthesis mismatch after the TAVR valve was put inside the other valve. And if you look at valves that are 23 millimeters or less, over 60% had severe prosthesis patient mismatch. And we'll hear some more about uh, prosthesis or patient prosthesis mismatch later. So, better durability, not much. Low risk of reoperation or TAVR, it depends. Well, let's finish with survival. It's commonly accepted that survival is similar, well, uh, with tissue valves and mechanical valves, and let's vote on this one. Is it true, is it false, or are you uncertain? Uh, about a quarter of the people feel that its survival is similar. 63% say that it's false and a few are uncertain. I, I'm, I'm almost in the uncertain camp, but I think there's evidence that it's true and I'll tell you uh, what, those, what that evidence is. There, we often lament the fact that there are no randomized studies of valves, but in fact there are randomized studies of valves. They're very old and they involve valves that we don't use now. There was a VA trial and there was a trial from Edinburgh where they randomized tissue valves to the old bjork shiley valve. Now, in, in the VA study, 15 years postoperatively, aortic valve replacement, Survival at 15 years was 66% in patients with tissue valves and 79% in patients with mechanical valves, and the difference was statistically significant. Not a huge difference in survival, but a statistically significant difference. At Mayo Clinic, when we <clears throat> tried to reproduce this in a more recent era, looking at the more current generation of bioprostheses and looking at bileaflet mechanical valves, we matched patients 50 to 70 years of age and we found a survival advantage to mechanical valves. Now this was not a very popular study because at this time, uh, many of the surgical groups in the United States ha had almost completely switched over to bioprostheses. And I don't know how it is in your practices, but I think there are many practices in the country where the surgeons say, well, I just always put in a bioprosthesis. Um, but that runs counter to available evidence. In fact, the, the advantage to the, to the, the survival advantage with a mechanical valve, not only did we match the patients in this study, we then did a multivariable analysis of the matched patients and the hazard ratio for death with a mechanical valve was 0.3. I mean, that's a pretty powerful reduction in, in uh, late mortality, independent of all the other risk factors for death afterwards. <clears throat> 
Now, this has been found in other large studies. This is a study <coughs> um, from Sweden where they looked at the outcome of aortic valve replacement in propensity match patients 50 to 69 years. Now, we're not, we're not really arguing about what valve you ought to use in an 80-year-old, but there is an issue of what you ought to be doing for patients less than 70. And in Sweden, there is an advantage in survival to patients who have mechanical valves. Interestingly, I, this is the other data from that study. They had exactly the same instance of stroke, again reinforcing the notion that there's no difference in thromboembolism between a bioprosthesis and an anticoagulated mechanical valve. And they have found exactly the same thing with bleeding. The risk of bleeding is about 1% per year, but it's 0.5% per year if you have a tissue valve. Now there's other evidence that there's a survival advantage with mechanical valves rather than, rather than um, uh, tissue valves that comes from uh, California. And this is looking at a statewide database that looked at outcome of aortic valve replacement. And what this graph shows is the hazard ratio for death comparing, if, say, if the, the, the mortality with a mechanical valve is X, and if you have greater than one, your mortality with a tissue valve is, is uh, higher here. So if you follow this curve and look at, at mortality related to age, there is an advantage with a mechanical valve until you get out to, guess what, age 65. Now, there are some people that look at this, there are surgeons that look at this, and they say, well, the confidence intervals cross at 55, so maybe it's 55 is the right age to use a tissue valve rather than mechanical valve. But the truth is that there's equipoise as regards more overall mortality between a tissue valve and a mechanical valve at age 65, which is just about what people have used in the past to decide whether or not to use a mechanical valve. It's more, it, it's more impressive when you look at mitral valve replacement. The hazard ratio for death with a tissue valve is almost two in a 40-year-old. And it's not until you get out between 70 and 80 that there's any equipoise between tissue valves and mechanical valves. So there's a, a survival advantage to mechanical valves up to the age probably of 70. Now, this has been found in other studies. This is the kind of stuff that, that surgeons argue about at meetings all the time, but I think there's plenty, there, not plenty, there, there are several studies that support that, and most recently was a meta-analysis of biological and mechanical valves that, and, and said that the, the authors concluded that mechanical valves are associated with a long-term survival benefit for patients between 50 and 70 years. So, survival, Similar to mechanical valves, probably not. So let's go back to our cases. The first case, the 66-year-old retired administrator with severe aortic stenosis elsewhere had an aortic valve replacement with a 23-millimeter bioprosthesis. Some of you chose that. And three years later, he was asymptomatic, but now in his retirement has a prosthetic gradient of 68 and an aortic valve area of 1. So he's looking at another operation or intervention. Now, case two is the patient who had rheumatic heart disease, the 20-year-old, <coughs> endocarditis, severe AR. I didn't tell you this. This patient had his operation in 1972. And in 1972, uh, one of the surgeons at the Mayo Clinic implanted in a Star Edwards valve. I saw the patient in 2014 because they said, well, he's got an older valve. He's here actually because he has a tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy. Should anything be done for the valve? And the answer is pretty straightforward. He has a normal aortic valve prosthesis. He had a 14-millimeter gradient. He had no AR, and he's continued to have mild mitral stenosis. So here is a great result, um, you know, for someone who had a prosthesis that now is not even in production. It's a mechanical valve that shows the importance of long-term durability. Thank you.